In the last class, we have started discussing information theory and in this class also we will continue uh, some more background on information theory. In the last class, we have defined entropy of a random variable, uh, discrete random variable and we have uh, discussed that that is uh, that entropy that is the average information contained in a random variable that is also the bound for source coding. That is the random variable can be expressed with a minimum number of bits which is same as the entropy of the random variable. So, the minimum number of bits required to to ex, uh, represent the random variable on average is h x that is the entropy of the random variable. Now, in this class we will start uh, by first defining some more information quantities and then we will go towards results related to channel coding. That is if you want to transmit information through a channel how much maximum how much information can be transmitted. We will try to answer that question after defining some more quantities with some examples. So, in the last class we have also defined joint entropy which is um, quite straightforward from the definition of entropy itself. Um, if we have two random variables x and y, two random variables x and y, then we define joint entropy of x y as summation over x and summation over y probability that capital X is equal to small x, capital Y is equal to small y times log p x y minus of this. We define this to be the joint entropy of x and y and we also uh, commented that this joint entropy will be equal to the sum of the entropies of the individual random variables if the individual random variables are independent. And we also saw examples uh, and we also proved that this is so. Now, if x and y are not independent then of course, it is not true that is the joint entropy is not same as the sum of the entropies. And we will see that it will be less than the sum if x and y are not independent. So, before going into that let us first define another information quantity. Let us define h y given that x is equal to a particular value small x. So, if capital X is known to be small x equal to small x, then what is the average information contained in y? Then of course, that will be clearly uh, determined by the conditional distribution of y given that capital X is equal to small x. So, instead of working with the uh, distribution of y, we will work with the distribution of y given that capital X is equal to small x. So, p y given capital X equal to small x uh, will play a role in this definition. So, this is defined as minus summation over y p y equal to y given x equal to x. We will denote this uh, simply by p y given x log p y equal to y given x equal to x. So, this is the uh, definition. You can see that this is simply condition it is the same definition as h y except that this all the probabilities are conditioned by capital X equal to small x. So, this is the uncertainty or the information contained in y if we know that capital X is small x. Now, of course, capital X may not be small x all the times. So, 
the probability that capital X is equal to small x is P x. So, uh, we can average this quantity itself over all values of x and that will give us average uncertainty in y if we know the value of x. Here this is the average uncertainty in y if the capital X is equal to small x a particular value, but once we average this quantity over all values of x we get the average information in y given x. So, h y given x that is the entropy of conditional entropy of y given x is defined to be the average. So, x, x will take the value small x with probability p x. So, that has to be taken into account while averaging. So, this is the definition of conditional entropy of y given x. Now, uh, one can intuitively feel that this is kind of the extra information that y contains once x is told. So, if they are dependent, if x and y are dependent, then if you tell me the value of x that will also tell me give me some information about y because they are x and y are dependent on each other. So, if you tell me the value of x we know some information about y, but even then there is still some uncertainty left in y. So, this quanti this quantifies the average uncertainty left uncertainty uh, left in y if x is told. So, uh, one can feel that this will be less than h y itself. Okay. Now, we will prove that in a moment. So, we can write this after substituting this for this quantity from this definition as summation over x then this summation summation over y then this minus comes here and then p x then this quantity p y given x log p y given x. Now, p x times p y given x is nothing but p x y. So, this is like averaging or expectation of this function. This is a function of x and y because p y given x itself is a function of x and y and this is the joint probability mass function of x and y. So, this quantity is nothing but the expectation of minus of the expectation of log p y given x and this expectation is computed by using the joint distribution p x y. So, we write this x y to denote that, that this expectation is computed using this distribution. Okay. Now, we prove a very important result, so chain rule, it says h x y the joint entropy is h x plus h y given x. So, what it says is that the total information contained in x and y is can be separated into two parts. One is how much information x contains and then given x what is the extra information that y contains. So, h x is the total information in x and y that is the sum of the information contained in x and the extra information in y given x. So, that, that seems quite intuitive, but we need to prove that using the definitions. So, let us just 
proof. So, h y h x y is defined this way p x y log p x y which is same as x y then p x y. Now, this p x y we break into two parts one is p x times p y given x. So, we get log p x plus log p y given x. So, log p x and then log p y given x. So, we get p x y log p y given x. Now, this quantity if you see if you look at the term inside the summations, we see that this is independent of y, this is only p x, only this part is dependent on y. So, this summation uh, this quantity can be taken outside the summation on x. So, this is this quantity is outside the summation of x and the summation p x y on y if you sum this over all possible values of y, what you get is nothing but p x that is the marginal distribution. So, this summation is p x and then this quantity and then this term as it is. This term we know to be h y given x that is from the definition of h y given x that is the definition of h y given x. And what is this? This quantity is h x. So, we have h x plus h y given x. Now, this result as we said is very important because it, it, is, it is also very intuitive as I explained just now and it says many more things. It says for example, that uh, that that uh, hxy is hx plus hy if x and y are independent because if x and y are independent hy given x is same as hy because x doesn't have any information about y because x and y are independent so the hy given x is same as hy. So, as a special case we see that h x y is same as h x plus h y if the um, random variables x and y are independent of each other. Okay. Now, let us see this with an uh, see this by an example. Let us consider an example of two random variables. We take two random variables and we take the joint distribution and we write the probability joint probability mass function uh, as a table, two dimensional table. X takes four values 1, 2, 3, 4. Y also takes four values 1, 2, 3, 4 and the probability that x is 1, y is 1 is 1 8. Probability that x is 2, y is 1 the probability that is the probability of 2 1 is 1 16th. Similarly, all the other probabilities are as following. Okay. So, let us take this particular uh, example and compute the in important information quantities that we have defined. First of all, let us compute the marginal distribution of x and y. What is p x? p 
px px so for x equal to 1 what is the probability we will get that by adding all these if we add all these we will get half half then if we add all these we will get one fourth if we add this we will get one eighth if we add this we will get one eight. Similarly, P y the marginal distribution of y we will get by uh, probability of 1 is sum of all these which is 1 fourth probability of 2 is sum of all these which is again 1 fourth and 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So, these are the marginal distributions of x and y respectively. So, what is h x? This uh, probability distribution may look familiar to you because we took this as an example in the last class and we computed the entropy of this random variable for this distribution and it came out as 7 by 4 bits. And what is the entropy of this random variable h y? This is uniform distribution, so it is 2 bits. Okay. Now, we have h x and h y. Let us also compute the other quantities h x y. What is h x y? This is the we have to take all possible values of x and y pair. So, there are 16 possible values. 16 entries in the table and take p x y that is this the probability times the log of 1 by the probability. So, for this term what do we get? We will get 1 8 times log 1 by 1 8. So, 1 8 ti times log 1 by 1 8 so, 1 by 1 eighth is 8 and log of that is 3, log 8 is 3. So, for this that log is 3, for this the log 1 by this is 4, this is 32, so this will be 5 and so on. And this will, so this will give us a term here which is 1 eighth times log of 1 by 1 8. So, that is 3 1 8 times log 8 that is 3 and there are the same value appears here. So, this quantity will appear 2 times and there is uh, no other term as 1 8. So, we will have 2 times this. So, that is the sum of the terms corresponding to this and this. Similarly, 1 16 is there 1 16th is there 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 times. So, there will be 6 terms which are 1 16th, 1 16th times log of 16 that is 4. Then 1 32, 1 by 32 is there 4 times. So, there will be 4 terms with value 1 by 32 times log 32 that is 5 plus there is a term 1 fourth. So, this is 1 fourth of log 4 that is 2. So, this is the joint entropy of x and y and what is this? This is 2 times 3 that is 6 by 8 plus 6 times 4 by 16. We can, uh, so 6 times 4 by 16 you can write as 24 by 16 which is 12 by 8. We want to keep the denominator same so that we can add. So, so we are not cancelling all the 2's here. So, this is 12 by 8 plus this is 5 by 8 plus this is 2 by 4 which can be written as 4 by 8. 
Now, if we add 6 plus 12 is 18, 18 plus 5 is 23, 23 plus 4 is 27, 27 by 8 bits. This is the joint entropy of x and y. Now, uh, now, let us compute the conditional entropy of x given y. The conditional entropy of x given y is written as i equal to 1 to 4 that is the summation over y, y takes these values and then probability of y equal to i times h x given that y is equal to i. This is how we defined this quantity. So, what is the probability of y equal to 1? we can take the marginal distribution, marginal distribution is uniform. So, all the probabilities are 1 fourth. So, 1 fourth times h x given y equal to 1. So, h what is the distribution of x for y equal to 1? The marginal is 1 fourth. So, we have to divide this row by 1 fourth that is multiply this row by 4 that is the distribution of x given y equal to 1. So, divide the joint distribution by the marginal distribution that is the conditional, we will get the conditional distribution. So, divide this row by 1 fourth that is multiply by 4. So, if you multiply this row by 4, what is the distribution we get? Half 1 fourth, 4 times 132 is 1 eighth, 1 eighth then the entropy of this distribution. So, we write it as h of this. So, this and then uh, other values of y also we have to take y equal to 2 has the probability 1 fourth and the, and the conditional distribution is this times 4, second row times 4 and that is uh, 1 fourth half 1 eighth 1 8 plus 1 fourth h third row times 4 that is 1 fourth 1 fourth 1 fourth 1 fourth because this is all 1 16th. Then 1 fourth h fourth row times 4 that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0. Okay, let us now compute these entropies. 1 fourth times entropy of this. So, entropy of this we already computed entropy of this is the same as this and entropy of this is 7 fourth bits, 7 fourth bits. So, this is 1 fourth times 7 fourth plus 1 fourth times again the same distribution in a different order. So, it has the same entropy 7 fourth plus 1 fourth times what is the entropy of the uniform distribution with 4 values it is 2 plus 1 fourth times what is the entropy of this distribution this does not have any uncertainty at all. All the probability is concentrated in one value. So, it has entropy 0. So, we have 7 by 16 plus 7 by 16 plus 2 by 4 which can be written as 8 by 16 which is 7 plus 7 14 plus 8 14 plus 8 that is 22 by 16 which is 11 by 8 bits. So, the conditional entropy of x given y is 11 by 8 bits. Now, let us verify the chain rule that we have proved just now. 
that is according to the chain rule we should have h x y to be h y plus h x given y the information contained in y plus the extra information in x given y that is the joint entropy of x and y. So, let us just verify that this quantity as we have seen as we have computed is 27 by we have computed this to be 27 by 8 and this is 2 bits and this we have just now computed 11 by 8. So, if you add this so 2 plus 11 by 8 is 16 plus 11 by 8 16 plus 11 is 27. So, 27 by 8. So, this is really same as the sum of these two. So, this is verified. We can also similarly verify that we can also similarly verify that h x y is h x plus h y given x if we compute this conditional entropy also. We computed here h x given y, we can also compute h y given x and we can verify that these two sides will be same. And if we if we uh, believe the result that we have proved just now that is this, then we can also compute this using this relation. So, what will be this quantity? This we know to be 27 by 8, this we know to be uh, 7 by 4. So, what will be this? This will be this minus this should be h y given x and this is nothing but 27 minus 14 by 8. So, this is 13 by 8. So, h y given x is 13 by 8 which you can which is uh, uh, obtained using this relation. Okay. So, uh, this relation can also be expressed in terms of a diagram like Venn diagram. If you denote h x by this circle, that is, this is the total information in x and this is the total information in y, then there is some common information between x and y that is this part. And if y is told this is known, so the extra information in x is this, this part and so this is h x given y. Similarly, this is h y given x. <coughs> so, obviously one can see that h x y which is joint entropy is nothing but this total, this is this h x plus h y given x or it can be said to be h y plus h x given y. And what is this part then? This is the common information between x and y and we will define this quantity also rigorously in terms of the probability distribution in a moment. So, this is called the mutual information between x and y, the mutual information it is denoted by x y the order does not matter i x y is same as h i uh, y x this is defined to be summation x summation y p x y log p x y by p x p y. So, one can see that this is the expectation of log p y uh, p x y by p x p y. The expectation is taken by using this distribution p x y. Okay. Now, 
uh, one can if, if one sees this uh, expression carefully uh, one observes that if p x y is same as p x times p y that is if x and y the two random variables x and y are independent then this quantity is always 1 for all values of x and y this quantity is 1. So, log of 1 is 0. So, summation over 0 is nothing but 0. So, if x and y are independent of each other then the mutual information is 0 and that is quite expected intuitively also because um, if x and y are independent you expect no common information between them. If y is told it does not re re uh, reveal any information about x because they are independent. So, uh, that is also so this definition satisfies our expectation in that regard. So, that is mutual information and uh, we can also we can also prove that this is same as this part this common uh, this common part here you know, that is h y minus h x given y uh, h x minus h x given y. So, that will be this part already we have seen that this is also true and both these expressions are true that is h x y is same as h y plus h x given y which is same as h x plus h y given x. So, if these two quantities are same we already have that h h y plus h x given y which is same as h x y is same as h x plus h y given x. Now, we can this means h y minus this quantity is taken on the left hand side and h y given x and then h x minus this quantity is taken on the right hand side with negative sign h x given y. So, that is what is this quantity h y minus h y given x this part. So, this what is left is here this quantity common part. And similarly, h x minus h x given y is also this common part. So, it is no wonder that this is true because we, we expect intuitively that this common part is same. So, it is it is obtained either as h x minus this or h y minus this. So, uh, that that these two are the same things and these two are the same things as uh, the mutual information between x and y. So, what we have defined just now the definition of mutual information will actually be same as this and that can be proved. So, first thing we observe is i x y is 0 when x and y are independent. Okay. Next, as you said we can show that this mutual information is same as either this or this. The let us just see that. So, we want to show that i x y is h x minus h x give x given y. Similarly, by interchanging x and y one can show that this is same as h y minus h y given x. Let us just see that. So, let us first write down the definition of i x y. This is summation over x and y p x y log p x y by p x p y. This is the definition of mutual information. Now, we can write this as summation over x y p x y then log p x y by p x can be written as uh, p x y by p y can be written as p x given y. So, p x given y by p x. So, p x y by p y is written as p x given y. Then we can write this as log p x given y minus log p x. 
then we will have two terms one is log p x given y the other is log p x. So, what is the first term? First term negative of the first term is h x given y because this is the expectation of log p x given y. So, this is minus h x given y and this quantity including the minus is h x because this is independent of y. So, the summation this quantity is same as p x. So, summation minus summation over x p x log p x is nothing but h x. So, this is h x minus h x given y. So, we have i x y equals h x minus h x given y. Similarly, one can obtain i x y equal to h y given uh, h y minus h y given x. So, we can now say that this part is really i x y the mutual information between x and y. So, this is uh, intuitively also quite nice because if you consider any part like h x or h y, if you consider h x for example, it is the sum of two parts. One is how much information y gives about x that is the mutual information between x and y and how much extra information x has that is this. So, if y is revealed, it gives some information about x that quantity is this and there is some extra information in x that is this. So, together they form h x similarly for h y. Okay. Now, we start channel coding theorem it is a very important theorem of uh, uh, important result by Shannon. Before discussing channel coding theorem, let us observe that i x y is a function of p x y, but p x y itself can be expressed as product of p x and p y given x. So, we can say that i x y is a function of p x and p y given x they together give us p x y and i x y is a function of p x y. So, it is a function of p x and p y given x. Now, consider the communication setup. There is a channel, a random variable x is transmitted and y is received. Then this uh, p y given x is actually a property of the channel. If x is given that is if the transmitted value is known the density of y or the distribution of y is a property of the channel. We have nothing to do with it. We cannot dictate what this will be for a particular value of x the distribution of y is given by the channel. So, this is a this is given by the channel and we assume it to be known. Now, the other part of which i x y is also a function that is p x is in our hand that is this is decided by the system designer. So, we have this in our hand, we can change p x as uh, 
we want. This determines how we are going to transmit the values of x with what distribution. Now, the channel coding theorem says that for any given value of p x, if p x is also told that we want to transmit with the uh, x with uh, the distribution p x, then the maximum rate at which we can transmit reliably, we will define the word reliably more precisely now, later, but uh, let us accept that there is something called reliable communication. So, if you want to transmit at um, uh, transmit reliably at what is the maximum rate at which you can transmit for a given p x and that is uh, nothing but i x y the mutual information between x y x and y and that is also quite intuitive because we are going to transmit x with the distribution p x and we are going to receive y and p x is also given and p y y y given x is also given by the channel. So, uh, if we transmit x with the distribution p x, then i x y is fixed and then from what we receive, we want to estimate the value of x and that information theoretically, how much information can you get about x from the value of y? That is nothing but this mutual information. So, so, this quantity should be the amount of information that can be transmitted through the channel by every use of the channel. So, by one transmission, we should be able to transmit this much information through the channel. And really, the channel coding theorem says that this is the rate at which one can transmit. More precisely, what it says is that for any so, channel coding theorem. So, this is uh, actual theorem will come later, but uh, this is a preparation to that. So, it says for any epsilon greater than 0. So, consider any probability of error that we are satisfied with. Let us say we want to have probability of error that is uh, considered to be beta error rate or something error rate, the error rate to be, we want the error rate to be less than 10 to the power minus 6 or 10 to the power minus 5 or 10 to the power minus 10 or whatever. Fix some small quantity that is, that gives us an upper bound on the probability of error that we want. So, given any epsilon greater than 0, which is the upper bound on the probability of error that is desired. we can communicate at a rate r if r is less than this quantity. So, for any epsilon greater than 0 and r less than i x y. So, if we choose a rate less than i x y, then if we choose any small probability of error bound we can transmit at this rate with less than this probability of error. So, for any epsilon greater than 0 and r less than this quantity, we can transmit at rate r, so that the probability of error average probability of error is less than epsilon. So, it is very important result, but it is also very important to understand the uh, understand the result the, the statement precisely. What it says is that you fix any probability of error that you are satisfied with you say that I want probability of error less than 10 to the power minus 100. And what this result guarantees is that if you want a probability of error of 10 to the power minus 100 or minus 200 or whatever, it does not matter, 
as long as you want to communicate at a rate which is less than the mutual information between x and y. If the rate is less than mutual information between x and y, then there is a transmission scheme by which you can transmit at that rate and the probability of error will be less than whatever you say. It cannot be 0, but it can be as small as you want. It can be less than 10 to the minus 10, it can be less than 10 to the minus 100 if you want. There is a scheme for that. Okay. So, now here also we fixed P x, the distribution of x is fixed because this quantity depends on P x. Now, P x can be still varied by the designer. So, we can choose P x and try to maximize this quantity also. So, actual, actually the channel coding theorem says that you can maximize this quantity by varying P x, choose the maximum possible quantity i x y that you can get by varying P x. And then if you choose a rate less than that maximum, that rate is also achievable with arbitrarily small probability of error. So, that maximum mutual information between x and y is called the capacity of the channel. So, let me repeat again that this i x y, this quantity i x y in this result depends on the probability distribution of x that we choose. So, we can try to maximize this quantity by choosing different p x. So, we can choose p x so that this quantity is maximum and then we can assume that p x, we can fix that p x and use that for transmission. Then the same theorem will tell us that for any rate less than that maximum is also achievable. So, the channel coding theorem says that First of all, we define C that is the capacity of the channel. So, this quantity is maximized by choosing a suitable value of P x. This maximization is over distributions of x. So, choose that distribution P x and that will give us the maximum value of this and then obviously, for we can restate the previous result in the following manner that for any epsilon greater than 0 and r less than c that is this quantity if you choose any rate less than c then we can choose that p x which maximizes this quantity then for that p x i x y will be equal to c and then r will be less than that i x y. So, this will become the same statement as the previous statement that for any epsilon greater than 0 and r less than c, we can transmit at rate r with p less than epsilon that is the average probability of error less than epsilon this is the channel coding theorem. And it says something more, it also says that if you choose a rate r greater than c, then this is not possible. That means, if you choose a rate r which is greater than c, then the probability of error is always greater than some value below which if you choose a value the probability of error cannot be brought down below that. So, for any rate greater than c the probability of error cannot be brought down to brought down near 0 as close to 0 as we want we cannot do that. So, uh, in fact one can if one plots the upper bound on the probability of error, um, the lower bound on the probability of error for different rate, this is rate and this is P e, 
then one can show that it is like this. It is this is the lower bound. on P. So, it will be something like this. So, and this point is C. So, if R is less than C, the lower bound is 0. That is P can be brought down to and uh, brought down to as close to 0 as we want. Whereas, if R is greater than C, say here, then the probability of error cannot be brought down below this point, below this level. That is the uh, channel coding. Uh, this is the channel coding theorem and the converse, so if this statement is called converse. That is, if r is greater than c, then reliable communication is not possible. And here by reliable communication, we mean that we cannot bring down the probability of error as close to 0 as we want. There is an upper, uh, there is a lower bound on the probability of error. So, for r less than c, we can bring down the probability of error to as close to 0 as we want, whereas if it is greater than c, it is not possible. So, this is really uh, from practical point of view also, this is the capacity of the channel, because we reliable communication is possible below this rate, but not above this rate. So, it is defined in terms of information theoretic quantities, whereas channel coding theory uh, theorem connects this with the practical communication schemes. It says that this quantity as defined using information theoretic quantities is really the maximum rate at which one can transmit information through a channel. Okay, so, in this class we have uh, we have seen the, the relation between the joint entropy of two random variables, the entropy of the individual random variables and the conditional entropies and also we have defined the mutual information between two random variables and seen the relation of this with the other information quantities that we have defined. And then we have discussed channel coding theorem in terms of mutual information between the transmitted random variable and the uh, received random variable. And we have said that uh, channel coding theorem says that reliable communication is possible if the rate is below the mutual information, maximum mutual information that is the capacity and is not possible above that rate. Thank you.